we have to realize that more than half of our patients do have mild to moderate disease. These are typically not the patients that we would see as a tertiary academic institution, but most gastroenterologists in the field see a high volume of patients with mild to moderate disease. The medical community is mostly interested in new and fancy molecules. And for some reason or another, all the new molecules are, have been developed for moderate to severe disease, for patients that are refractory to the treatments that we have. For mild to moderate disease, we typically use amino salicylates and topical corticosteroids like budesonide. And these molecules have been around for more than 10 years now, are well known, and that's probably why there is less scientific uh, attraction to uh, studying mild to moderate disease. It is correct that of all IBD patients with mild to moderate disease, 20 to even 40% of the patients does not have an optimal response to the treatments that we offer. And there are numerous reasons why that can be the case. First of all, physicians might not use the optimal dose of the treatment. But also secondly, the patients might not take the medication as it is prescribed. And by fixing those items, we will uh, already be much more successful in reaching optimal treatment outcome. Non-progressive Crohn's disease is a difficult condition to describe, just because we don't know upfront at diagnosis if the disease will be non-progressive or the disease will be more aggressive. We just do not have the, myo the biomarkers or the predictive factors for that. Now evidently there are patients with mild after ileitis, for instance, in Crohn's disease, and quite a few of those patients will do well when they are offered cyclic treatment, repetitive treatment with topical corticosteroids. Typically, these patients do not uh, need immunomodulatory or biologic treatment, and they will be well for very long, and in most cases, not need surgery and not have complications. The situation in ulcerative colitis is different from that in Crohn's disease in that we have a very effective maintenance treatment. We know that aminosalicylate treatment is highly effective to prevent flares. Many patients continue treatment and remain free of relapse for many, many years. And when they flare, it's often caused by a lack of compliance or by patients reducing or just discontinuing their treatment. So in ulcerative colitis, I really advocate continuous treatment, even lifelong. And we know that also continued treatment and control of inflammation reduces the risk for dysplasia and eventually cancer. Mesalazine is the mainstay of the management of mild to moderate ulcerative colitis. No drugs have been more effective for mild to moderate disease than uh, these agents, which can be used in many different ways. You can use aminosalicylates as combination treatment of topical and oral treatment. You can use suppositories. You can use only oral therapy. So there are many treatment modalities in which you can adjust the treatment to the disease location and to the severity as per the needs of, of the patients. And in doing so, more than 40-50% of the patients will be brought in remission with 5-ASA treatment alone without needing corticosteroids. Budesonide is a pivotal treatment for the management of mild to moderate Crohn's disease, be it ileal or iliocolonic. It has been shown in many studies that the treatment is almost as effective as systemic prednisone. So basically for all forms of mild to moderate Crohn's disease, budesonide should be used first line, perhaps except for patients with very severe systemic manifestations where systemic prednisone might be preferable.
Basically, all patients that respond to induction treatment with aminosalicylates usually stay in remission when they continue aminosalicylates in the right dose and for the right duration. There are many factors that are important in improving our success rates in patients with mild to moderate disease. Patient selection is one of them. If you give treatment that is effective for mild to moderate disease to severe patients, your success rates will be low. So patient selection, potentially based on endoscopy, but also on the severity of the symptoms is very important. And then of course, using the most appropriate dose. The deciride should always be given at a dose of nine milligrams per day to start with, and then perhaps tapered at a later time point. For ulcerative colitis, sufficiently high doses of 5-ASA for induction of remission are important, and in patients with moderate disease, we will often combine oral treatment with topical treatment, which then later can be tapered to maintenance dose with oral treatment. As we often see, lack of compliance is associated with increased risk of relapse. So it is very important for the patient to understand and the physician has, of course, to help the patient and make the patient understand that continued treatment is associated with a much higher uh, success rate and with the reduction of future flares of the disease. Raising the dose of mesalazine has been an issue of debate for, for many years and companies have considered and even designed clinical trials to test higher doses of mesalazine. Personally, from a, from a toxicity standpoint, I see little objection, but it has never been formally tested. So it could very well be that high doses of 5-ASA are even effective in moderate, mild to moderate Crohn's disease. And it might also be the case that in moderate to severe cases of ulcerative colitis, higher doses of aminosalicylates contribute to the success of the whole management.